everybody give Andy a really warm <laughs> welcome. Hello, right, so um, it's that time of the year, festive break. Who's excited about Christmas? I'm excited. Yeah, a few people in the audience. Who is seeing family this Christmas? I am, yeah, they're coming to you. Are you going to them? Uh, mine are coming on Boxing Day. I'm, um, I'll say I'm looking forward to it, but like, like everyone in the IT industry, um, we have a unique talent which is unlocked at Christmas um, because there's nothing I like better on Boxing Day to be asked, ooh, while you're here, would you mind having a look at the computer? <laughs> and I don't know about you, but if I were to spend two hours on Boxing Day looking at a bloatware-filled Windows XP laptop, running virus scanners and anti-malware things, um, that, that's a job well done, and um, particularly when it's one that's had something that Marjorie's husband installed something to watch Sky Sports for free. That's a particular winner for me. Um, but of course, there are many, many people out there who would be interested in helping your relatives and your family in uh, fixing their computer. Unfortunately, they're not as honourable as they sound. They might be trying to steal, oh, let's think, credit card information, passwords, banking details, uh, files, personal information, or installing horrible ransomware stuff or deleting stuff. There are some horrible people out there. And I don't like those people. And I've heard of people being phoned by them. And I thought, well, one day I'll get phoned by one of them. And I'm really going to absolutely rip them to shreds. And lo and behold, in the spring of last year, I got phoned by one. Um, it turned out it was like a, you know, a, the no, no number displayed on the caller display, so I thought, okay, this is going to be an interesting conversation about the merits of the telephone preference service and PPI. Um, but I answered the phone, hello? I said, hello, is that Mr. Bergen? I said, yes, yes it is, as it happens, I live here. Um, he said, um, this is Windows support. I thought, great, I've got one, I've been waiting for this day. <laughs> OK, and at that moment, 25 years of IT experience just left my head. And he said, OK, Mr. Bergen, uh, we've detected that your computer is under attack. I'm like, no. Really? What from? He says, viruses. I'm like, OK, well, uh, what, what do we do? This sounds terrible. He said, are you on a computer now? He said, I want to run through some simple checks first, and then we can help fix the problem. I'm like, thank goodness you phoned. So he explains to me what he wants me to do is hold down uh, a key in the corner of the keyboard. He says, look at the bottom corner of your keyboard. Can you see something that looks like a flag? I say, oh, the flag key. Yes, I've got one of those. He says, well, that's actually the Windows key. Oh, is it? He says, yes, it is. Well, you are an expert, obviously. Um, he says, I want you to hold that down and press the R key. I'm like, OK, press the Windows key, then press the R key. Hold the Windows key down and then press the R key. Hold the R key down. You get the idea. This is going to go on for quite some time. Eventually, I hold down the Windows key and I press the R key. And he says, what's happening? I said, nothing. Do you want me to turn the computer off? <laughs> <laughs> he's got quite annoyed at this point. But basically, he's trying to get me to open this run dialog box here. So after another couple of failed attempts, whoopsie. Um, he asked me to type the letters INF, which he explains as India November Foxtrot. Again, it might just have been the stress of the situation, but it took me a little while to do that. I think he got most vexed when I asked him how many O's were in November. But eventually we got there. And I pressed OK, and lo and behold, <coughs> opening before me was this window of C colon backslash windows backslash inf. As everybody knows in IT security, that is the sign of an pending attack. Um, he asked me in the window if there were any icons. I said, oh, yes, there's quite a few. He said, oh, dear, it looks like you're under attack as we speak. I'm like, oh, dear, what can we do? He said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to download some software so I can access your computer and fix it. It took quite a while for us to download this software due to the fact that there was lots of short URLs and I was in a bit of a panic. Um, and when I asked him if the virus scanner and the ad blocker uh, was actually indicating a problem, he said, oh, no, carry on. Don't worry, that's fine. Bypass that. But OK. So I start downloading this software. And he says, 
Okay, how's it going? It's downloading. It's downloaded yet? I said, no, it's going to be 19 hours and four minutes. Do you want me to phone you back? At that point, he got quite cross and he said, is your computer really old and slow? I said, well, I bought it about the same time as my wife's friend Marjorie. Her husband got one. Uh, his has got a black case and mine has got a beige. Would that make a difference? <laughs> At that point, he hung up. But luckily, I got another call a few uh, months later, this time not a nondescript number, this time from the technical metropolis that is Birmingham, an 0121 number. And this was a much more sophisticated attempt to get me. Again, it was, hello, is that Mr. Bergen? Yes, this is Windows support. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm, in, I'm in a three-level attack here, three-level. The first guy I speak to is explaining to me um, about what he's going to do. And he's saying, my computer's under attack. Um, I'm saying... OK, um, what do you want me to do? And this guy's trying to work out if I'm stupid enough to fall for it. Luckily, I'm trying to work out if he's stupid enough to fall for what I'm doing. Um, so I say, I'm sorry, I've got to pop out a minute. I'm blocking somebody in. I put the kettle on, made a brew, checked my Twitter, checked my Facebook, went back 10 minutes later. He was still there. He was stupid. Um, <laughs> so he's, we went through the rigmarole of trying to open a folder on the computer and eventually show some icons there. We did that, and he assured me that, that was, I was under attack from viruses. <coughs> At that point, he handed me to Level 2 support. Level 2 support was a very nice lady, slightly passive-aggressive for my liking, but nonetheless, still, still very helpful. And she assured me that she could help us. She spoke to her colleague and explained the problem. I said, hang on a minute. I've got ABG antivirus, free edition installed. How come these viruses are attacking me? She said, ah, well, these are very new attacks. These are only detected by our, uh, by our systems here. I said, OK. Can you help me? She said, yes, I will pass you on to my colleague. It didn't go so well with this guy, I've got to admit. It, it turns out that my inability to type URLs in, um, my inability to download things and run things, really caused a bit of friction. At one point, I asked to be handed back to the lady on level two support, but apparently that wasn't possible. And then he got very, very angry with me. Um, to the point that he started shouting. And he said, right, because I want you to look at your keyboard. I'm like, uh, OK. He says, you see the enter key? I'm like, yeah. He says, you see the key next to it with the wavy line on it? He said, yeah, the tilde key. He said, that's not the tilde key. He said, it is. He says, that wavy line is a banana. And that banana is for you, because you are a monkey. <laughs> now, I can't remember exactly the last time I was referred to as a monkey as an insult, but I think I was seven years old. And I did consider coming back to him with, no, you're a monkey and so is your mum. But I was a little bit shocked. Um, and he started shouting at me. Shouting at me, told me to hang up. I'm like, no, you hang up. And then I realised that he probably wasn't in Birmingham. And this, the way he got the Birmingham number was routing it through several different phone things. And he couldn't actually hang up. So while I had him on the phone, he couldn't be scamming anybody else. So I left it. And then he got really cross. Um, and at one point, I hung up after he said, I'm Osama bin Laden's brother-in-law, and I'm coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, back in December, after I'd fixed the computer, I had a discussion with Marjorie who knew all about Osama bin Laden and explained to me he only had five siblings and one of them was female. And her husband died in a plane crash in 2007. So it couldn't have been him. OK, so probably an untrustworthy individual. And I suppose the point of this talk is when you're at your family over Christmas and they ask you to look at the computer, as much as an inconvenience as it is, it's probably worth doing. It's probably worth telling them about um, my story tonight and the fun I've had with them um, because really you don't want scammers making a monkey out of your family. <laughs> that will do. Thank you.